today we will continue our uh, the study on the book of James and today's lesson 6. Uh, today's title is whether you are a hearer or a doer. So that's uh, from James chapter 1 verses 21 to 25 and this subject is also continued in chapter 2 that we will do it later but today we will do uh, the first part of it like because if I include that then it will be a it will become a very big lesson so I thought I will do this one okay hearer and doer therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does amen so if you really uh, look at it james uh, again picks up the theme of uh, you hear and then not only you hear and you do the work as we know he's been writing to the uh, believers uh, who had been scattered abroad uh, all over uh, from the jewish believers so that's where that's whom he is writing so first he says uh, you know first receive the word with meekness now the words received with meekness will produce you know that will implant in your heart will save your soul so meekness means it is not weakness and many people think meekness is weakness. No, weakness is I'm not able to do it, but meekness is I can do it, but I will not do it. So that's what meekness is. If you really look at the dictionary, it defines as having or showing a quiet and a gentle nature, not waiting to fight or argue with other people. In a biblical way, it says meekness means gentleness, caring, a lack of contentiousness. So, if you really uh, look at about uh, meekness, uh, Jesus is our ultimate example for meekness. In Matthew 5, 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 1, he says, Apostle Paul, he writes, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. So how do we uh, see the meekness of Jesus Christ? When, these, when the soldiers comes to arrest Jesus Christ, and Jesus comes forward and then he asks, who are you seeking? They say, okay, we are seeking for Jesus of Nazareth. And then he steps forward and he says, it is I and everybody falls down and then Jesus has to surrender himself for them to be arrested so it is not weakness that Jesus surrendering himself to the soldiers is not a weakness it is a meekness and also you will see in uh, John 13 um, you know, this is ultimately in John chapter 12, until chapter 12, he does the uh, public ministry. In chapter 13 onwards, it is his private conversation uh, between him and the uh, disciples. And chapter 17, he prays the prayer and then he ends his life like. So in chapter 13, uh, what he does is he calls his disciples and then he washes his feet of his disciples. In verse 5, I have printed on the notes, then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. What really amazes me, even I still try to visualize, he washes all the feet of the disciples, all 12 of them. 
including the one, the Judas Iscariot. And he is going to betray that night. And yet, Jesus washed his feet. You don't find in any way that he uh, did it in any different way or something. He never treated him that way. So as soon as it finishes, he says, yeah, I know. Today I'm going to be betrayed. He know who, who is, he knew very well who's going to do that. Yet he did not show any disrespect or any kind of thing. He humbled himself. That is his meekness. So we are to uh, learn from Jesus Christ. The ultimate is, which we recorded in the scriptures in Luke chapter 23 verse 34, while he is on the cross. This, they were uh, the Roman soldiers are nailing him to the cross and they were mocking him, they were spitting on him and they were doing everything. But Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. It's so amazing. You know, they did not come and ask Jesus for forgiveness. They never even felt sorry for it. And they never even had that remote chances of that they were feeling bad or anything. But yet, Jesus humbles himself with the meekness. He says, Father, forgive them. So here, James says, we have to receive that word with the meekness. I always uh, stand amazed when people come to know the Lord, the first time when they come and hear, when you hear something, they are so excited. They say, wow, this is so good. This is so good. And after some time, that, that excitement goes away and they are just sitting, yeah, it is okay. It's a turn of the sermon. I don't know why this happens. I don't know, I get excited every time when I read a word or when I go to preach. It's, it's, so, it's so awesome, you know, you get some kind of a new revelation and new words. It always fascinates me. But then when uh, people come, they sit and they sit like, okay, right, oh, Luke chapter 19, oh, Zacchaeus story. John 4, oh, that Samaritan woman. People get into all kinds of mood. They, they, it's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't excite them. They, they, they don't look forward to hear what the Lord is saying. The, because they've lost the meekness. It is meekness, you know. Because we, we think that we know. Uh, recently someone was um, uh, calling me and uh, saying about how difficult it is to sit under the um, his pastor's preaching. It's absolutely so bad and things like that. So I was telling him, you have to look at Jesus. When he was 12, he was able to interpret the scriptures and he was able to talk to the people at the synagogue. He started his ministry when he was 30. For 18 years, he has to sit and listen to the nonsense what was said in the synagogue. It's not easy. How many people would have preached or how, how many times they would have preached so wrong? And Jesus sat, no problem. So I think I said, you should listen to Jesus. You should be like Jesus. I said, okay, Pastor, thank you. <laughs> so it is not a thing that we need to humble. We need to be, we need to have the meekness. Then only we'll get excited to receive the word. Otherwise, it's yet another service. It's yet another sermon. It's yet another message. And our second point is in that verse, in verse 21, uh, James says, the word should be implanted. That's a word, a very good word, implanted in English. It's a plant, we know, we put and everything. Implanted is, it has been in a sap, one sap with another sap, it's a planting. So the word should be implanted in us like that. Then only it is going to be, um, you know, we will not just hear us when the word has been implanted. The difference between uh, listening to a message from the Bible and a message or a lecture from the other thing is a very different. You go to a history lecture, the history professor studies the course and then he 
comes and preaches and uh, teaches about it and then you hear a lecture on that subject and you hear something it doesn't alter the way you live it it is there you have got you have acquired some knowledge so it is there in your head it doesn't changes you but the word of god it should not be like that when you receive the word it is has to reveal the person of the lord jesus christ otherwise the word will be only in our head it will not give any transformation one of the very well known example if i can take is we can take the pharisees the pharisees in the old testament they were very very uh, religious and not only that they have learned all the scriptures they have dedicated their life for knowing about or studying about the coming messiah how the messiah is going to come when he is going to come and how he is going to rescue rescue us they have dedicated their life they were very sincere they were very very serious about following god they were following they were doing all kinds of things to make sure that they are following all the commandments yet when jesus came they completely missed it not only missed it they were the one who was out of jealousy they drove him to the cross it's absolutely unbelievable if you really look at it those days the pharisees they 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 committed their life they had the zeal they studied and they interpreted they preached to others but they missed the core reason why they were doing it so it's very important that not only we read the word and that word should be implanted in us what is the difference again you know difference between hearing some other word and the word of god when we uh, heard the other words or the history or a science or a english whatever lecture you hear you have a knowledge in your head that is you are having some information so, you know when you have the knowledge in your head you have got information but when the word goes inside your heart then only the transformation comes it's no longer uh, information then it is it has got to become a transformation in our life the transformation comes only when the word goes inside our heart but not by having the word in our head that's why first corinthians 8:1 says now concerning the food offered to the false gods we know that we are we all have knowledge knowledge makes people arrogant that you know the king james version puts it across knowledge puffs up here it says knowledge makes people arrogant so we it it will make us arrogant and uh, we we that's why it should be very important that we learn uh, we we are not uh, stop learning the word of god it's not just in our head it is got to go into a deep in our heart and the words got to be implanted then only that word will be able to save our souls otherwise it will be just a knowledge head knowledge we will also become like pharisees we will know about god but we will not know god that's that's one of the reason why we should be uh, able to make sure that we are hearing the word and that word is taken into our heart and that has given that has makes us a transform and we are able to uh, do the word a good example i can give you is you know the, the advantage or the disadvantage is when somebody comes and shares a good example is that say uh, we are here someone comes from either from india or sri lanka and then or from africa he comes and shares how people are struggling for their uh, livelihood or maybe they are going through uh, so much of difficulty and we are all moved and then we wanted to help either you are unwilling to help or you didn't have that money at that point in time 
so you you don't help it but you have heard about it and you wanted to do it but you haven't done it and then the opportunity goes away then you go to some other place or maybe you go to a church and then again someone else comes and hears uh, says the similar thing there when you hear what you will tend to think is yeah these people should listen to it and these people should act upon it these people need to hear this message they have to act upon it even though you never did anything because you heard it it is there in your head it doesn't go away it is there in your mind even in our own case like you know you you there is somebody else is going through finance difficulty and we want to contribute and you say yeah yeah we need to contribute but you didn't contribute and the next month comes and we have got few more people and then somebody else is comes by, comes back and then shares about the need for uh, investing uh, we, we need to help the other gentleman you will say yeah let these guys all invest that these guys all invest in this kingdom let them help the others even though you have not invest, you have not given the money because it is in your mind the word it stays in mind it doesn't go away that is why it is very important that we have to make sure that we are when we hear the word we obey and we give it that's why the word we should receive it with the meekness then it is taken and it is it has got to translate into action james gives an another wonderful example of seeing yourself in the mirror so i got this picture the cat is looking at itself in the mirror whereas it it visualizes itself as a lion you know sometimes we also do that or maybe most of the times how are we seeing ourselves in the light of as a mirror as a word of god what do you see and what are the flaws and the sins you see in you or you see in others you know when we um, look at the word like you know when we talk about uh, say some kind of a sin like let me let me name it liars uh, somebody you know keep telling lies they are so bad immediately you can remember somebody who's a liar who you know or someone who gossip gossip is a sin immediately you will think oh okay i know that sister always gossips or this guy is always gossip or maybe you say adulterer oh immediately we all know somebody we will look at someone you know we always look at someone else who's in who's a sinner in doing that kind of a sin we fail to see the sins in us that's why james puts this very beautifully he says a man who goes and looks at himself in the mirror and then he forgets okay i got a mirror so i look at myself in the mirror okay say i have got a, a some problem here what we generally tend to do is instead of i have a mirror so i can see that i have some sin in myself so i have to clear out clear that out instead what we tend to do is we try to clear here the problem is here this is this is the mirror is showing what is the problem in me but what we try to do is generally we try to here okay let me wipe this mirror so that let it be clean no it will never be clean because the problem is here this is why when we read the word of god we should not do any pick and choose we have to take the whole counsel of god the, 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 because there are many many uh, times when we look at the scripture we should not okay uh, this is not for us this is not for me that's not for me 
and then you know we keep reading until a convenient verse which comes to you ah okay thank you lord that's that's what happens that's why you know la- i think last sunday i shared about it we have become a buffet christians or a la carte we choose we pick and choose what we want we won't take the whole counsel no that's too much no we will not take it so when we hear what we are commanded to do and when we don't do it what will happen we will be deceiving ourselves that's what james says you see in the mirror and you see there is a flaw then you need to correct you should not forget it then nobody you know when you see yourself you don't forget it the same way in the light of the scripture you see yourself and you see there is a flaw in you then you should not forget it and you need to correct yourself according to the word of god or don't alter the word of god according to you because when I mean, apostle paul writes to timothy he says last days in second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 and it says the, the, the last days signs is people have itching ears they want to hear what they want to hear so there is a two kinds of preaching people go to what they want to hear there is another preaching what you need to hear today you have got all this big mega churches they all gather together they say what they wanted to hear your best life is now the bible never advocates that bible says that we have got a eternity this life whatever happens you have got a eternity but the people are so happy they are so cheerful they want to be you know pumped up like in a football coach who coaches them like that so they all go what they want to hear but the word of god says the as a pastor we need to teach and preach what people need to hear and that's where when we don't do that we will get a self deception we will start deceiving ourselves imagine if you are deceiving yourself who can save you <laughs> you know if you are sleeping we can wake you up if you pretend to be sleeping exactly this is where the self deception comes the when the word of god is meant to changes a uh, psalm 119 verse 11 uh, psalm is says lord i have hidden your words in my heart so that i may not sin against you john 17 17 says sanctify your lord your word is the truth so that is got to change us you can come to the church you can sit years together listening to the messages every day week after week you can come and you can listen until you allow that word to change you what will happen you will only have knowledge about god but your life will never change you may even you know read the bible from index to maps maybe you are able to even quote the verses what is this verse what is that verse interestingly i always uh, you know when uh, someone shows up the bible knowledge i always ask them brother quote me john 316 i love to hear that he will go boom 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 god so love the world okay tell me what john 317 says huh? okay john 315 no interestingly don't worry i am not going to tell you i know you are all <laughs> giving me what looks so or- i am not going to ask you to do that okay generally you know that's how we we, we have got this habit pick and choose uh, words habit okay so when you don't when you hear the word if you don't act upon it you will end up deceiving yourselves exactly that mirror picture 
a cat will be looking, instead of looking itself as a cat, it will end up looking like a lion. This is, you know, this deception you will find very religious people, those who are portraying themselves as very religious and um, they've got all kinds of knowledge about God in their minds, thinking on what they think is knowing about God is enough. They may even be able to teach it or preach it, but their life doesn't reflect it. Bible knowledge should not produce more theologians, but a transformed lives. Today we are end up producing more and more theological points and theological persons, but not transformed lives. That is the biggest deception we have got in the Christianity today. Christendom have got into that today. They've got so many people who can talk They've got a very good oratory skills. They can, they've got some good memory power, but their life is such a mess. <clears throat> a second Timothy chapter three, verse 17 says, what the man of God may be, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 17. It says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the word of God has to be in the heart of a person, not in the head. Only when it is in the heart, then it will transform that person and then it will change his character. That will portray God in his life. So I give a couple of examples uh, that they know God and yet their lifestyle did not reflect. One of the finest example, if you want to do, you do a study on uh, Solomon. It's a wonderful example. He even wrote some three or four, or three books in the Bible, yet his life does not reflect the wisest man uh, lived like. He is the wisest man lived, but the way he finished it, no. It was horrible. So that's another big example. So I didn't take that. So I've taken a smaller example, Samson. Samson was a mighty man uh, in the Israel, anointed by God. And he was fooling around with Delilah for so many times. And uh, he thought he is uh, not vulnerable. So he kept on fooling with her and every time the Philistines come over him and then he will throw them out and then he will keep going. But eventually he had told her the truth and she had made sure that the Philistines had come and cut off his hair. And this time when she says, hey, Samson, the Philistines are on top of you. And as usual, he gets up thinking that he can throw them away but then he realizes, God, he doesn't realize God left him and he is all alone. Judges 16, 20, it says. But later, after that, when he was uh, gone into the mill to grind the thing, when his eyes was gouged out, I'm sure he learned his lesson through a very hard way. You know, he was deceiving himself that he is not vulnerable and he made a big, big blunder. The other one is a builder of the house. Two builders, and they build each build them their houses. Uh, Jesus gives this parable in Luke 6, um, verses 46 to 49. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid, laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard 
and did did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great so there are two builders one guy built it on without a foundation and jesus compares that guy the guy who hears it and does not obey and does not do the word what he heard that the guy who hears and does is like the one who dug deep put the foundation and built the house on it but the guy who built it on a sand it is like he is the guy who just hears it but he does not apply any of the principle any of the teaching in his life and the life does not change in himself so jesus makes it clear the storms will and do come beating against every one of us sometime or another there's no escape on that but how we weather the storms is all depend upon our ability to hear and obey his voice you know for a follower of jesus christ his word is the final authority nothing else if we take the word literally and obey the word of god as the final authority then we have got a hope and if we don't obey or we become conveniently we choose what we like what we don't like then we will not be a, a, a guy who built the house on a solid foundation and we will be a deceiving ourselves but you look at your life where are you or how you built your house as a christian life how you have built your life have you uh, built it like digging deeper within you what are the problems in you have you predict and dug it out and brought it out and then you built it on christ or you just okay it's okay just cover it up it's okay just go on like so here james was saying the jewish believer to know that the their life should reflect what they believe in wherever they are because they are all scattered from jerusalem so he is writing to them so they are all living in a different place so he says okay guys you have gone you are living there and make sure that you are believer in the lord jesus christ let your life portray jesus like that's why he is saying you know you hear the word and do the word very importantly he says but one last example i wanted to share is this jesus wrote uh, letters to seven churches that's almost ad 95 almost after 65 years of his resurrection he writes a letter through john through the leaders the last letter uh, the seventh church a uh, church in ladosia he writes to the elders in the ladosian church the church leaders convinced in themselves that everything is all right with them they did not find that they had, they are in need of anything they are doing exceedingly well that's what they thought and that's what they convinced themselves that they are doing okay but when jesus writes in revelation chapter 3 verse 17 he says because you say i am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing look at the word need of nothing and you do not know that you are a wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked look at the rebuke they are wretched and miserable poor blind and naked how could that church think of that way jesus is saying you guys are really really wretched and miserable poor and uh, blind and naked whereas they are thinking we are wealthy we are rich and we don't need anything we need we have need of nothing we are fine 
but jesus gives the most uh, horrible uh, rebuke to the church saying that you guys are absolutely useless absolutely there is there is nothing that he can say that i wonder do we also deceived ourselves that way today you just examine your personal life and also as a corporate life how are we living our life this thought came to came to me when i was writing this notes if jesus writes a letter to our church today oh dear oh dear how and what he will write if jesus writes a letter today in 2016 and we say when he wants to write a letter okay wcf here you go i want to send you a letter how it will be for a moment i got scared or maybe you just think if he is going to write a letter personally to you addressing to you hey i know how hard pressed you are or how wonderful you are what amazes me when people die when we go to funeral i haven't seen any funeral anyone is saying that fellow is a bad person he must be a wife beating murderer and alcoholic addict and uh, all those thing yet people go and say he has been very kind everyone knows that he was beating up everyone but they will go and say he has been so kind they all tell lies even though you can't tell any good thing about him still you go and tell something at least that fellow is dead and gone let me say some good thing about him like maybe is that the reason we are also saying some good thing about others they are all dead it's a very sobering thought if jesus has to write a letter how will he write will he say that you know you guys are saying you are need, no need of anything but you are wretched miserable poor blind and naked five big rebuke words so how do we avoid this self deception james gives an attitude also in this four verses he gives another attitude for that james 125 he says but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty that's a word of god that's a perfect thing of liberty and continues in it that's the key continues in it you look into that you do the self introspection and you see what you need to give up you give up and what you need to do you do and continue in it and it's not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does so you remember the word and you do the word and continue in the word this is what will change our character and we can encounter the self delusion deception like a mirror the word of god will always show us the truth the mirror doesn't lie it will show what it is it doesn't show what it is not so when you read the word the word will show whether you are a sinner or where you are struggles and everything so please don't try to correct the word or don't try to avoid but look into that scriptures and then see where you can change and how we need to change and where we need to obey and do the word will you obey and be a doer of the word let's pray